Oh boy, they threw up the bat signal and it's bad news. This is not good. What's going on everybody? It's Ghost Robo. I hope you guys are all doing well. And, and I know you're not supposed to be mad or, or sad or annoyed by delays. You're not supposed to get frustrated because it is a, a crazy time and it's totally understandable and, and we want everyone to be healthy. But I can't lie, I am bummed. One of my most anticipated games of 2021 has been pushed to 2022 and and we got to talk about 2021 because have you looked at the calendar do you know what's coming out between october november and december like nothing so we got to discuss this problem and, and what's going to happen and, and if if anything's going to happen so make sure to let me know in the comments down below how you feel about gotham knights getting pushed already to 2022 are you bummed are you are you still excited for the game what are your thoughts? Please talk at me and hit that like button if you're hopeful that this game is still going to be great because I was so pumped. The return of one of my favorite franchises. You know how much I love Arkham Asylum, Arkham City. I even love Arkham Knight. I just, the world they create, the way it controls, flying through the city, the side missions, the characters, the storytelling, the collectibles, it's all chef's kiss. And I feel kind of dumb because I was just like literally like a day ago getting so excited that we're starting to get game releases, we're entering a great Q2, things are going to start heating up, okay, the delays are kind of, uh, they're over for now, we're going to be, oh my gosh, how wrong was I? <laughs> 2021 is finally heating up in terms of game releases, and ooh, baby, is that a good feeling. So we need a great place to grab our games. And that's why today's video is brought to you by Prime Gaming and Valorant. Now, I've been an Amazon Prime subscriber for over a decade now, longer than I've done YouTube, and I haven't regretted it once because they've got ultra-fast shipping and the best deals. Plus, now they've got Prime Gaming, which brings you free games and free loot every month. You Valorant players out there can currently grab a Love Bite Gun Buddy. And if you're not playing Valorant, I highly suggest you do so. First off, it's free to play. Second, it is ultra crispy and fast paced. And third, they just upgraded to episode two, act two, brought in Astra, and you're in for a true treat. So make sure to click the link in the description down below to sign up for Prime Gaming, grab your Valorant loot, and check out the rest of the goodies. They're bringing new stuff each and every month. Plus, every click helps support the channel, so show some love and get set up for a great year of gaming in 2021. And now, this new foray, this new experience, this co-op-focused Gotham Knights, it was something I was insanely excited for. I thought the initial reveal looked fantastic, and they already had so much gameplay, I was sure we'd be experiencing it in 2021. Not so fast. Here's exactly what went down. Gotham Knights uh, will now launch worldwide in 2022. We are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. Thank you to our amazing fans for your tremendous support of Gotham Knights. We look forward to showcasing more of the game in the coming months. And it's totally understandable, right? Like I said, this makes sense. Tons of games are getting delayed. We've been told tons of games are getting delayed. It's understandable. Life is hard right now. Working is hard right now. Game development is hard right now. It's still a bummer. And now this game is pushed, you know, hopefully till spring 2022. Because if it's pushed till fall 2022, oh baby, that is going to be an 18 month wait and that's a very long time. And at some level, like, you know, this game, this game, like, it, it seemed like it was close, right? It seemed like, hey, they've already got like this gameplay demo. It wasn't just a logo pan, right? It wasn't just like, oh, like a pre-rendered cutscene. Like it was gameplay. They played it. They showed it. It looked really, really cool and it looked very nice and... It's so many interesting systems, the way that you're leveling up the characters and progressing along one of the four knights and, and fighting these boss battles. They showed off Mr. Freeze and it just seemed like it was going to be a game that could be played single player, it could be played co-op, it could be played online. It was just going to be great. And and yet clearly it wasn't, wasn't anywhere near close. And it begs the question, like, is there something we can do about this? Is it greedy management, right? Are these executives forcing these devs like you have to show the game, you have to set a date even though the devs know they can't hit it? Is it all about corporate greed and like, we want the pre-orders, we want the hype, we want the advertisements? You know, where where is the piece of the puzzle that we can kind of fix? Because even well before 2020, we were seeing substantial delays. Games more and more were getting delayed. And I know the, the quote, I know that, you know, a bad game is forever bad, but a delayed game has a chance of being great. And I know we always want games to have the time they need to be great. I get that. I agree. And yet, I think there's something to solve here in terms of not announcing so early. I really have high respect for companies like Bethesda and Nintendo as of late, who announce and then the game comes out in a few months. 
Like that was so great with Fallout 4, boom. People have been waiting for this for a while. We're not gonna tease you. We're not gonna tantalize you. You're not gonna try to draw out those pre-orders and bleed you for all your hype. We're gonna announce it in June and we're gonna launch it in November. And I hope they do the same thing with Starfield this year. And Nintendo has been great about it as well. Hey, we got Mario Golf, boom, it's out in a few months. Hey, we're not 100% sure about Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. We're not gonna show it. We're not gonna flash a year on the screen. We're not gonna try to give you a date. We will let you know when we know. That to me respects the gamer and the consumer so much. And I wish everybody would do that. It's just, it's the right thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do by the developers in case anything comes up. I think it's the right thing to do by the fans so we're not given false hope. And the only thing that seems to be the issue here is corporate greed because I know that these devs want their game to come out. I know they want to please the fans. I know they want to do well. I know they want to see their achievement become an accomplishment. I know that. And so Gotham Knights getting delayed, like it's not the end of the world. It's totally understandable. It's just a big bummer. And it makes you wonder what the heck is going to not get delayed in 2021. I was doing research and I looked and between October and December, there's literally like nothing announced. Okay. Obviously we know we're going to get mad in August. We know we're going to get NBA in September. We know we're going to get FIFA. We know these year things. We know we're going to get Call of Duty, right? We know those yearly franchises are going to be there. But right now on the slate is like nothing. Like, like guys, literally nothing. When I was looking, like you've got Life is Strange 3, uh, True Colors coming out September 10th. That was just announced yesterday. You've got a Hot Wheels game on September 30th. Ghostwire Tokyo is supposed to be in October. That's the PS5 game uh, from Tango Gameworks and Bethesda. There's a Dark Pictures anthology that's supposed to come out this year. And like, what else? I mean, inevitably, Sony and Microsoft will have games. Halo should probably come out, but nothing as a date. Like literally after August, it is barren. And even August is barren. No More Heroes 3 is coming to Switch on August 27th. Kina, Bridge of Spirits, that PS5 game that looks really sick, is coming August 24th. Like, the second half of this year is empty. And, and that gives me hope, right? It's a problem because, like, oh my gosh, what are we going to play? And I think this year is going to be one of the slightest, lightest, smallest years ever in terms of lineups. But what gives me hope about the second half being empty, it's like two sides of the coin, right? On one side, you say, okay, that sucks. There's no games. And what I'm going to try to say and be hopeful about is that, hey, Companies are getting smart. They are keen in on this. They know it's a tough year and they do want to wait. They do want to make sure that they can announce and give an accurate and appropriate release date. So, you know, we know Nintendo is going to have games this fall. Frankly, Nintendo seems to be the least affected by all of this pandemic stuff. They're handling it with flying colors. I, I don't know how, but kudos to them because they, they, they still seem to have such a lineup and plenty of plans. And we're talking about like a Switch Pro and Breath of the Wild 2 and all these things. And I'm sure they've seen their fair share of delays as well, but nothing of this magnitude where it's like getting pushed a full year, or at least we're not privy to it. And maybe that's ignorance is bliss, right? Maybe that's a good thing. But I think the fact that Microsoft and Sony have not confirmed their fall lineup, I think the fact that major publishers like EA and 2K, we don't know what they're bringing this fall. I think that's really good. I think you're going to see a lot of games announced at E3 2021, which is supposed to be a digital event. And, and whether like that actually comes together in this like magical week or whether publishers do their own thing, like separate streams and whatnot, we're going to get a bunch of announcements in the summer. And I think that's going to set up the second half of the year. The question is like, will that stuff get delayed then? You know, are they, are they, are they confident and smart enough to make sure that they can hit those? And, and I hope the answer is yes. This can go one of two ways quite quickly. It can go the way of like, holy crap, all of 2021 is just a bummer of delays and empty slots. And there's going to be hardly any games to play outside of the Call of Duty, the Madden, you know, like that main tried and true old reliable type stuff, or they're going to go and start a new path of saying, Hey, we are going to respect developers, respect fans and announce the games when we're sure we can hit them. And we're actually going to have a great second half of 2021 that is loaded with titles that they can deliver upon. And it'll be a really exciting, exhilarating time because we'll see games get announced in the summer. We'll see them released in the fall and they will only commit to things that they're confident they can deliver within that, you know, four to five month window. I think that would be phenomenal. That's what I hope for. And that's what I'm keeping my fingers crossed for. Cause right now, 2021, Things are looking up around the world. Things are, are getting better. I know not for everybody. And I know we still need to be very smart and very safe. I'm like, dude, I, I think we got to be so careful this entire year. But things are looking up. And, and gaming, I want I want it to be a part of it. And, and I hope that they're able to still put together a pretty fun lineup across all platforms. Whether you have, you know, whether, whether you have a PS5, whether you have a PS4, whether you have a Switch or a PC. I hope there's good things to play for everybody. Because right now that calendar is empty. And I'm trusting that, you know... 
this is going to happen. I'm trusting that we're going to get short hype cycles, good announcements, games like Starfield, Halo Infinite, maybe even Horizon Forbidden West are going to fill up the fall and be magical. But there will be more delays. There will be. I think games that have dates already, like the, you know, between now and September, I think are safe. But, but then again, I don't know. Like Resident Evil Village, yeah, that's probably going to hit in May. Like I'm almost positive. You know, we're two months away. Games from Nintendo, like Mario Golf, like, yeah, those are going to hit. But man, anything else, like, I think if you're, you know, maybe I should course correct. Not, let's say, not in the next couple months. But like, let's say if you're, if you're not, if you're not re releasing in May, I think there's a chance you could get delayed. I think anything beyond May has a chance to get delayed. I mean, we saw Kina mentioned that PS5 game get delayed multiple times. Returnal got delayed recently. I, I think that's safe to hit its new date. But if you're not coming out within like a two month window, man, you could get delayed. And, and, ugh, like I said, it's totally understandable. It makes perfect sense. I want them to do what they need to do for themselves and for the games, both. But as a fan, as a gamer, as somebody who lives and breathes this stuff and wants to play all the latest and greatest and have so much fun with the, the freaking Gotham Knights, it's still a bit of a bummer. So let me know your take in the comments down below, what your hopes are for the rest of 2021. Make sure to click the link in the description. It really supports the channel. You can check out Prime Gaming. It's a great package. Uh, get just a bunch of free stuff, free games. It's really pretty cool. And I encourage you to do that. Uh, until next time, though, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart out there. I love you a lot. I appreciate your support. Thank you for, for being a part of this channel and continuing to support my efforts, bringing you guys cool content and trying to, you know, just, just keep on keeping on. I love you guys a lot. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you have a great weekend. And until next time, thanks again. Drink some hot chocolate. We will see you all. Alay.